This is the daily video update for Monday, November 30th, 2020, for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. As has been our practice the last few weeks, uh, this Monday we'll take some time to talk about the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic in Nebraska. And today we'll also talk a little bit about vaccines and what they mean. So two things have been true for a few weeks now. We can see the end of this pandemic. We can see how it's going to end. Today, Moderna joined Pfizer in applying for an emergency youth au use authorization for the vaccine that they've developed. If all goes well, the first injections could be given as early as December 21st. And at the same time, it will take some time before those vaccines get to everyone that needs them. So we are still in the midst of a significant widespread pandemic. For the third week in a row, there were nearly 2,000 cases reported in Lincoln last week. The percentage of tests that came back positive was just under 30% last week. Now, to put that in perspective, for much of this fall, the cutoff for uh, New York City to shut down large parts of the five boroughs was a test positivity rate between 2 and 3%. Lincoln was at 30% last week. And so it's vitally important that you continue to wear masks and stay home when you can. And eventually, it will be important to get a vaccine. Now, vaccines are still a few months off, and they aren't going to be available to everyone at once. But there is nothing in our faith as Unitarian Universalists that should give you hesitation about getting vaccines. You have a responsibility to your own health to make it through this pandemic. And more than your own health, vaccines are a tangible way that we can care for the interconnected world that we talk about as a church. This idea of herd immunity, if enough people get vaccinated, means that when we get a vaccine, there's a good chance that the life we're saving isn't our own, but it's someone we've never met, a face at the grocery store that doesn't contract COVID because enough people around them were vaccinated. And just in case that's too abstract, I'm one of those people. So I don't usually talk about my own health in great detail, but as we get closer to this, this moment of vaccines, I'm going to. The public health advice says that, that, uh, we should highlight the stories of people that benefit from widespread vaccine campaigns. And, and so we should be clear that, that I'm one of those people. 10 years ago, I was diagnosed and treated for Hodgkin's lymphoma. And in the aftermath of that cancer, I live with a condition called common variable immune deficiency. And this particular disorder means that my immune system is not capable of producing its own antibodies. So remember, vaccines work by prompting the body's immune system to produce antibodies for a specific pathogen. And it allows the body to remember that virus or that illness and respond to it quickly. And the clinical test for the condition that I have is to give the patient a pneumonia vaccine and then test a, a month later to see if the vaccine took. In the somewhat dry terms of my immunologist at the time, my body does not mount a robust response. And most days that doesn't matter. Once a week at home, I self-administer a 50 milliliter dose of subcutaneous immunoglobulin. And this vial, this is one of the ones that uh, I inject once a week, contains antibodies collected from several hundred blood donors. Because my own body doesn't produce antibodies, I am dependent on the immunity that those donors have that's collectively contained in these bottles. And that means two critical things. First, I'll get the COVID vaccine probably the first day it's available to me. But chances are my body will not mount a robust response to it. And so, too, that makes me very dependent on other people. 
Because if enough people around me get vaccinated, my chances of contracting the virus decrease. And if enough blood donors are vaccinated, eventually the antibodies that they develop will make it into this immunoglobulin that I inject once a week. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not sharing that story for sympathy. I'm healthy and quite happy with my life. I'm also not sharing it for medical advice. I have a great immunology, oncology, and primary care providers that I meet with regularly. But I am sharing this and will continue to do so in order to humanize the, the real benefits of widespread vaccination. Part of public health guidance in the midst of pandemics is to, is to start sharing stories and examples of folks who benefit from widespread immunity. I'm one of those people. So if you're worried about getting a vaccine, think about not just what it means to you, but what it means to people like me. And if a family member or a friend is thinking about not getting vaccinated, tell them about folks like me. Send them to this video. Public health requires collective action. Every action that we take in a pandemic serves two purposes, both to care for ourselves and to care for our neighbor. So keep doing those things, and I'll see you tomorrow.